We're going to take a look at the extensor mechanism of the knee, uh, patellar uh, tendon, patella, and the uh, quadriceps tendon, and the structure surrounding that area. So we start here distally on the, um, the tuberosity, this, uh, that you can see here quite clearly. It's a very nice bone line, it goes down a bit, not too steep, uh, downwards, downwards, downwards. And then you see the patellar tendon here attaching. Uh, the superficial line, you see that it goes on quite far. You can see it going until here, more or less. And the, the deep part, it ends here. Important to know that this tendon is almost two and a half centimeters wide. So if you want to scan the tendon, you should make sure that you also go uh, medially and laterally. So I'm gonna show that now. I'm gonna go, first I'm gonna go medial. I'm gonna continue medially until we don't see any tendon tissue anymore. We still see a little bit of tendon, it's getting thinner, 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 and it's gone. And I go back, I go lateral, 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 even further, 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 and there it stops. Yep. So then you have a, uh, you checked the complete tendon in the one axis. Uh, down here, sometimes you can see some fluid inside the bursa. I'm gonna check for it now, but I don't think I saw it there. Here, maybe a tiny bit of bursal fluid. It's uh, anechoic right there, and it's quite lateral in this case. You can see it's quite lateral on the, on the tendon. Uh, a little bit of fluid there is normal. Uh, some more fluid is also normal. Too much fluid is suspicious, and with your Doppler, you can check if it's actually a bursitis. Um, then we go a bit more proximal. We're now in the mid portion of the tendon. We can very nicely see the peritoneum superficially and the peritoneum uh, deep to, uh, from the tendon. And deep from the tendon itself, we see here the uh, fat pad. Yeah, you see the fat pad of Hoffa. Sometimes here in the deep, you can see a bit of the cartilage and the bone um, of the femur, but in this case, uh, you, we cannot see it, which is also normal. We go more proximal, then we end up at the distal pole of the patella, right here. We see the uh, tendon attaching. I'm gonna go medially and laterally again. And I'm gonna try and see if he has a typical artifact that you can see. Uh, here you see it a little bit. You see that here is a little hypochoic uh, area right here. Uh, some people think that this is actually a pathology, but this is a little bit of anisotropy um, from the distal fibers going into the bone. So if it's dark in that area, don't always say that it's directly uh, a pathology. You can check with the contralateral side because you will probably see exactly the same image. Good, then we are go a bit further. We're on top of the patella right now. Uh, here we see a very nice bone line of the patella. Uh, we don't see any uh, strange structures. Uh, people that do contact sports or rugby uh, they sometimes have very strange bone lines here, but in this case it's quite a normal uh, line that we see. Uh, we see that the patellar tendon here, the last bit is going over, over, over and stops quite far on the patella, right there. And superficial to this layer we see a hyperechoic layer that is continuous with the peritoneum distally. If we continue this line proximally, we see that it will continue above the tendon of the quadriceps, because this is the tendon of the quadriceps. Now it's in completely anisotro uh, in anisotropy, uh, and the fascia line over it continues, continues. And then here we can uh, angulate the probe a bit to get a better view. So you can see what the probe would I do. I angle the probe a little bit in this direction to get a better view of the tendon. Uh, important, I didn't say that in the beginning, is to do it in around 30 degrees of flexion. Because if you don't do this, let's see if we can do this, just uh, relax the, the, the foot and do it like this. You see the tendon is hanging very loosely, you see, and it's very hard to get a good image. And the same will be here for the uh, patellar tendon. See, it's a bit dark, it looks a bit strange, especially at the distal end. So make sure that you're in 30 degrees of flexion. Okay, here we have to adjust the depth a bit because in the deep part here, we want to see the femur. So we adjust the depth. Here now we see the line of the femur. Here we see the quadriceps tendon. Uh, this here is a triangular shaped uh, fat pad. That's the super patellar fat pad. And deep to it, all this is the uh, pre-femoral fat pad. 
In between these two fat pads, you can have some fluid in the superpatellar recess or the open bursa, as you call them in Israel. Um, go a little bit lateral. Sometimes you might see a bit of fluid. Let's see if you're lucky. Go lateral, lateral, lateral. Maybe a tiny bit of fluid here, but it's almost too little to see. So uh, if you don't see any fluid, that's normal. If you see a bit of fluid, that's normal. But the fluid should not be extending all the way till here. That's usually an indication of something going on inside the joint. It's not very specific, but um, uh, it can give you a reason to investigate if there's something happening in the joint. Um, then I do the same in short axis. So I start here on the uh, patellar tendon uh, in the mid portion. Then you can see a very nice view of the tendon. You can see the width, I go a bit medial here. This is the medial border. I go lateral here. This is the lateral border. And you see that it's a very wide tendon, two and a half uh, centimeters more or less. And first I'm gonna go distal. So this is the tendon. This is the fat pad. I go distal and we take a look what happens. We go here, here, here. Yeah, and now you see the middle part of the tendon becoming dark, that's normal. That's because the first bundles to angulate towards the bone are in the middle. So this is anisotropy. Uh, so you can, if I angle the probe again this way, you see you can make it normal. Uh, and if I do it like this, it's dark again. So that's not uh, ten, uh, tendinopathy. Uh, sometimes you can see the bursal fluid under here, there it is, the very tiny speckle of fluid that we had before, anechoic, you can see it here, it's almost too little to see, if I press it, you can see that you can compress it, and it's gone. Yeah. Um, we go a bit more distal, you can see all the last fibers inserting, and uh, yeah, that's more or less the insertion. Go back proximal, go to the mid portion, go further up, all this down here is still the fat pad, we go up proximal, proximal, until we reach the uh, patella here because the in the center again the uh, the fibers will start to angulate so here you get a little bit of anisotropy that's normal that's not directly a, a, a pathology but that's normal we go a bit further up and we see the last bit of tendon here it's quite thin now you see and we go a bit further up further up and then it's gone we go further 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 up to cranial because then we will reach the uh, quadriceps tendon. If I go up in this direction, uh, you can see that my probe is still in this plane, but the tendon is coming up a little bit from uh, this direction. So if I scan this direction, I'm not scanning perpendicular to the, um, to the fibers, and you will see, you can see it now on the image, that the tendon will become completely full of anisotropy. So to, to change this, the easy thing to do is take your probe, and you have to angulate it towards the fibers. So let me do that. So we do this direction. And now we angulate it towards the bone and perpendicular to the tendon fibers. And this is the tendon. We go a bit more proximal. Then we'll see the tendon uh, completely here. Uh, it's, it's not a nice tendon like the patellar tendon or the Achilles tendon because uh, it's a bit, it's comprised of different, uh, of three different uh, uh, tendons actually, or three lines. So this is no a normal image of the quadriceps tendon. Here below again, we have the fat pads. If you press, you can see that you can really compress the fat pads. And if there's any fluid in between, you can also push it away. Um, from here, we go a bit further up. We go a bit more proximal. And we follow the tendon proximal till here more or less, where we're gonna see the muscle belly of the um, uh, the rectus femoris. So let's continue, continue, continue. There we go. You see, there's a nice muscle belly of the uh, uh, rectus femoris. Go distal again, and you see it disappearing, and you see that this is the tendon. Okay, last thing I want to show you here is when we are in this position where we see the rectus femoris, in the deep part, we see the femur, we see the uh, uh, vastus intermedius beneath. And if I go uh, medially first, you'll see that all this muscle belly here, that's uh, vastus medialis. I go lateral, 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 lateral. And here we see two muscles above each other. This is uh, the lateral uh, vastus, and this in the deep here is the uh, vastus intermedius. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that these continue quite far uh, laterally, so I'm gonna follow them. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go 
all the way down here, down here, down here. And you can see on the image, fastest lateralis and the intermediates, there's a fascia in between. We follow it down, 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 a little bit more depth, a lot of musculature. <laughs> and we go down, 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 all the way to here. And then you will see a hyperechoic line here that will separate these two muscles from the biceps. So this exactly, and this location, where the, in the more I'm messing at the side of my probe, this is where they end. So from here to there, that's all um, fastus lateralis and fastus intermedius. And before I forget, because I said it was the last scan, we had one more. <laughs> really warned me not to forget it. Um, because we have a scan of the femoral cartilage, uh, what we do, we do a complete flexion of the knee. The kneecap will move uh, down uh, uh, from the uh, femoral cartilage and we can take a, a good look here at the cartilage of the femur. So if we look at this image, it looks a bit like a seagull that's uh, 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 floating above the sea. We call it the seagull view. Um, you see the uh, hyper reflective line here, that's the uh, femoral cortical bone and above it is an anechoic line, that is the line of the femoral cartilage. Um, we can go a bit uh, lateral in this case, and we can see the lateral border of the, uh, uh, of the tro trochlear groove, and we go a bit proximal. You can follow it up, 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 up. You have to angulate your probe a bit to keep a nice hyperechoic line below, and it stops here. So if you look at my probe, my probe is now in this direction, and if I go up, I have to do this because the, your uh, uh, sound beam has to stay perpendicular to the cortical bone line. So constantly you need to, while you go proximal, you also have to follow the contours of the bone. You can do the same thing on the medial side. Here we have the cartilage again. We start as far distal as we can right here, and then we go proximal. Oh, I have to start moving. Let's do it with two hands. Uh, there we go, proximal, 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 proximal. Can go further even until there. And that's the whole part.